Hello everyone, and welcome to an epic journey through the realms of Minecraft. Today, we take you to a world unlike any other. This is Kingdoms and Conquest, where mighty nations forged by players recreate civilizations while going to war and amending peace treaties. Last episode, due to a dispute over taxes, the Isle of Anchors and Nevlon nearly started a global conflict. But after peace talks, the situation cooled. However, Nevlon ended up declaring war on the Isle of Anchors due to the harsh taxes not being lifted. The two nations now get ready for war. But back over in Ibraria, the near world war had some consequences. A treaty was signed by Ibraria and Austmacher, stating that Ibraria would have no ties with Mercenta. However, during the scare of World War, Ibraria turned their back on Austmacher, and Ibraria decided to forge a secret alliance with Mercenta. Upon learning of Ibraria's covert alliances, Austmacher's anger grew, demanding a power shift that would place Prime Minister Bronzebear in control. But Ibraria, determined to find a peaceful resolution, refused to bow to this pressure. Ibraria faced a crossroad, succumbed to Austmacher's demands, risking internal turmoil, or take a bolder path towards unity and progress. They choose the latter, embarking on a journey to prevent not only a war between nations, but also a civil war within their own borders. The Sultanate, a symbol of past authority, would be abolished, making way for a new era, a socialist republic that aimed to uplift all citizens. The transition was not without its challenges, yet as Iberia worked to reshape its government, its people found a sense of unity and purpose. The dream of a nation that valued equality, justice, and cooperation began to take shape. The nation of Evlon declaring war on the Isle of Anchors, a move that would set off a chain of events with far-reaching consequences. The conflict was centered around the unjust taxes and economic power. This declaration of war would force the Isle of Anchors to have to build another boat, spending even more resources during an already tough time economically. The Isle of Anchors was unable to prepare as well as Nevlon. The two nations met in the middle of the treacherous channel between them, their vessels ready for the impending showdown. With fierce determination, they engaged in a fierce naval battle, as Evlon showcased their power with a formidable boat that outmatched their opponent's vessel. As the clash continued, Nevlon's boat proved to be superior, enabling them to gain the upper hand and secure a victory in the naval confrontation. No! <laughs> Nevlon pressed forward, pushing onto Isle of Anchor's land, winning battle after battle with their unstoppable momentum. I'm going in. Crap. No, 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 no. Gosh darn it. Oh, I got Hidden's Obituary! I got Hidden's Obituary! Is that Pano or Nate? <laughs> That's Pano. Ow. Oh, he's right there! <laughs> Our attack! Oh my god. Ah! Does no damage to me, but I'm fire open. Get him! Snooting me in the air! Oh, what the hell? Oh my god. Oh. The Isle of Anchors found themselves unable to withstand the relentless onslaught of Nevlon's forces. The war ravaged nation was left with few options but to face the harsh reality of surrender. The Isle of Anchors yielded to the demands of Nevlon, signifying a moment of profound defeat and humiliation. But saddest of all, during the conflict, Commander Nate was killed. The nation would mourn the death of its co-leader, but in his place, a new co-leader would rise. Someone far more dominant and now seeking to put the IOA back at the forefront of global politics. In the wake of the recent war, the IOA was left in a state of disarray and economic ruin. The war has taken a severe toll on the nation's resources, infrastructure, and social fabric. A plummeting economy has put the IOA on the brink of collapse. Captain Nate rises to the occasion as the new co-leader of the IOA. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, Captain Nate wastes no time and embarks on a mission to revive his nation. The first thing he does is reach out to other nations in hopes to make an alliance that could provide much needed support and stability. After careful deliberation and diplomatic negotiations, 
Captain Nate successfully forms a crucial alliance with the thriving nation of Mercenta. Mercenta, known for its economic and military power, agrees to extend its hand of friendship to the IOA. Mercenta's assistance proves valuable to the IOA's recovery efforts. With Mercenta's guidance, the IOA begins to harness its own potential. But the Isle of Anchors was not the only nation dealing with an economic crisis at the moment. Everwinter was a landlocked nation surrounded by mountains. Prosperity of Everwinter relied heavily on trade routes. However, not having access to the coastline hurt their trade and resulted in their slow economy. In the face of economic ruin, the leaders of Everwinter came up with a way to get out of their dire situation. A daring and desperate plan was devised. Declare war on Corinto, seize their fertile lands, and gain access to the sea. The declaration of war sent shockwaves through the region. Corinto, a prosperous coastal nation, was taken by surprise of Everwinter's aggression. Meanwhile, the nation of Ibraria, allied with Corinto, prepared to come to their aid. However, Everwinter approached Ibraria, offering a substantial sum of valuable resources in exchange for their neutrality in the war. The Ibrarian leaders, tempted by the wealth offered, began to reconsider their loyalty to Corinto. The decision weighed heavily on the Ibrarian leaders. Loyalty to their ally Corinto and the ethical implications of accepting Everwinter's bribe created internal turmoil. With Ibraria's neutrality secured, Everwinter's armies pressed forward. Corinto set up a small fort where they would shoot down at the Everwinter army. And as Everwinter entered the fort, a surprise awaited them. Corinto's trap would slow them down, but it was not enough to stop the Everwinter army. Eventually, Everwinter was able to make their way up the fort, and shortly after, take it over. Everwinter hit Corinto hard, and after the short battle, Corinto surrendered, giving Everwinter the land they had hoped for. With this new land, Everwinter quickly boosted their economy. And with the world market prices dropping and the revival of the global economy, nations were now becoming richer and stronger than ever. Captain Nate knowing that if he doesn't do anything now, the IOA could be overshadowed by the larger nations. So, Captain Nate formed a new global organization called the Amalgamated Free Thinking Nations, where he would be the head representative of this new organization. With many nations starting to join, Captain Nate could feel the power within his grasp. It was time to rally the nations within this organization. So the first ever meeting for the AFN was held in the IOA. Thank you very now for coming, uh, Isle of Anchors, uh, Vente, um, Nevlon, uh, Soliciting, um, Zootopia, and Mercenta. I appreciate you guys all coming to the very first meeting of the uh, AFN. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed leaders of the world and fellow architects of a new era, today we gather under the banner of the AFN, an organization poised to shape the, the course of global politics and diplomacy like never before. The days are gone of weak and divided nations, shackled by morality and bound by the outdated principles of cooperation and compromise. Today, we declare the birth of a new order, one where power is the ultimate currency and domination is the highest virtue. We will forge a world where the strong reign supreme and the weak submit to our rule. Diplomacy, a tool wielded by the naive, shall bow to the might of our ambition. We shall not be shackled by discussion and negotiations. For our destiny lies in the iron grasp of our dominance. The world will become our playground, a stage upon which we enact the darkest desires and most ruthless agendas. The days are gone of moral deliberation and ethical quandaries. We shall carve our path with an unrelenting thirst for power, crushing opposition, a coalition of cunning minds, strategic thinkers, and ruthless visionaries. We shall exploit every crack in the system, manipulate every vulnerability, and exploit every weakness to ensure our dominance. Our unity will be our strength, 
as we infiltrate institutions, manipulate ec economies, and orchestrate chaos to further our own ends. The weak shall perish, and the strong shall thrive in this new world order we forge. Let it be known that our legacy will be one of fear, subjugation, and unrelenting control. Those who dare to stand against us will be crushed, their voices silenced, and their resistance quelled by the might of our unyielding power. In conclusion, my fellow architects of domination, let us embrace our true nature without hesitation or remorse. Our destiny is to rule, to reshape the world in our image, and to establish an era where the free-thinking nations are those that bow to our supremacy. Let the world tremble before us, for we are the architects of its ultimate destruction and rebirth. May our dominion be absolute, our ambition unwavering, our rule everlasting. The amalgamated free-thinking nations shall rise, and all others shall fall in our wake. Thank you, and let the era of dominance begin. As the world's tension mounted, leaders hungered for power while nations searched for growth. It was just a ticking time bomb until the bubble of chaos burst, hurtling the world into turmoil. The age of conquering has begun. Hey, IOA, so I've been kind of feeling bad about the whole war thing, and I wanted to do something nice for you. Really? Yeah, here, have this. What is this? It's a promo code that allows you and all the viewers to get 25% off on your first purchase over at Boosted Hosting. What's Boosted Hosting? Boosted Hosting is a Minecraft server host that is not only reliable, but also affordable. All their servers are just $1 per 1 gigabyte of RAM. I myself use Boosted Hosting even for Kingdoms and Conquest, so you know it's good. Wow, thanks Nevlon. I totally will forgive you and never start another conflict with you ever again. Click the link in the description to get your very own Minecraft server today. And use promo code CommanderNateYT to get 25% off on your first purchase. This offer cannot get any better. Do it now. It's great. It's, it's time to do it. Go get your own server. Yeah. Ahoy there, matey. I'm Captain Nate. And today we're going to be starting a new segment that I like to call Oopsie Whoopsie. Let's get the inside scoopsie of another nation. Kind of a long name. Uh, we'll have to shorten it eventually. Usually when I do these videos, you don't really get to see the, the nations and the cities they build. So I'm going to start going to them and giving you guys little tours of them. And today, the first nation that we're doing is... Ba -da -ba -da -ba -bum, drum roll. Atticus. Oh yeah. So let's head over there right now. Here be the main port of Atticus. Uh, very nice buildings, a very cool dock. This is actually the first time I'm seeing this myself, so uh, it, it's new to me too. Uh, they got some cool cranes, very nice, very beautiful scenery. Look at that mountain, oh baby, beautiful. Um, what is this stuff here? The metro station, a train or something? That's so cool. A lot of stuff. L let's move on. They got their nice flag here, looking cool. Building being built, a sheep farm, a bunch of farms. A chicken farm, more beautiful houses, uh, the cottage, everybody loves cottages, please stop messing up the chest, true. And let's see what we have over this way, here will be Metro Station, oh cool. Okay, from the looks of it, I think this is the only city, uh, if that's not true, correct me in the comments, but I believe this is, but it's a very nice city, I really like it, it's, it's coming along, I think it's gonna look fantastic once it gets more uh, done. I rate this place a 8 out of 10. I really like it. I would even live here. That's how nice it is. It's great. But there, there ye have it. I be your host, Captain Nate. And this is Oopsie Whoopsie. Let's find the inside scoopsie of other nations. That's the name we're going for. I shall see you all in the next episode of Kingdoms and Conquest. Please like and give me, give me a little subscribe, if you will, because it helps me out a lot. Thank you for watching, and please, uh, don't do anything bad. Okay, Captain Nate, out.